what is up my beautiful people i am back with a video and i am so excited to be here today it is first thing in the rising i am here to just run my mouth i got so much to cover but i'm gonna make this as quick as possible but anyways without further ado i want to thank you first first of all let me slow down and say thank you for watching this video. I am truly appreciative for the subscriber count and, you know, just getting people to, you know, hear me out because I am here to share and it is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful process. This is not a um, race. This is actually a journey and it feels so good to be growing. So I hope you guys are just, you know, bearing with me and accepting this process because i am learning myself still i am still you know adjusting in a sense but i'm not going to elaborate too much i just want to give thanks and show appreciation a little bit before i jump into this and just thank you guys for understanding me <laughs> so without further ado let me just jump straight into it now, as you can see today we will be discussing genetics and yeah Let's jump straight into it. So, let's begin with DNA. So, we as star people consist of 12 DNA strains. So, with that being said, we are only tapped into two of those 12 that we contain, which leads us with the 95% junk DNA that is stored within us, which is, as we know it as, junk DNA. So by us as beings not truly tapping into these remainder strains, we have yet to become mindful of our highest capacity or our highest level of consciousness and not to, make, not to mention our highest level of capabilities. So if we have yet to tap into the rest of us per se, how have we or how will we ever understand the true um you know abilities that we withhold so this is where myself i believe that we truly can fly i believe that we can levitate or communicate telepathically or even perform telekinesis now these are you know all quote unquote superpowers but in my analogy in my opinion i feel as though we withhold all of these within us so by us not tapping into our truest potential or our truest self how can we uh ever say that we have tapped into our abilities so if you are um following me here i basically am saying that we are the souls we are not the bodies we are inhabiting a vessel we are the person within this vessel that are basically pretty much controlling this vessel so we are adjusting or um, learning it in a sense and by me saying that if you pretty much don't believe that analogy that we can fly or we you know withhold all of these superpowers then let me ask you this question if i were to say raise your hand who controlled that like who raised the hand you or did your hand just fly up out of nowhere you get what i'm saying so just look at it in that sense and kind of um detect whether or not you you know have that ability so if you are in control then you have yet to tap into the true you especially being that you haven't accessed or activated all 12 strands of dna so by us not biologically um apprehending our fullest level of existence how can we ever you know detect that truth like how can we ever decide whether or not we are superman or superwoman because we haven't even tapped into that true ability yet you get what i'm saying so let's just take lucy the movie for an example i know plenty of you may have watched the movie lucy but 
by the as you, if you haven't of course go watch it but by the end of that movie you can see that she tapped into her fullest level of capacity but in that movie i can see that they kind of put the truth and the lie you know like they always do so they used her brain in that um situation they said that she didn't tap into her full potential of her brain but in this case it's our dna so if we were able to access all of our DNA and it be activated and in corresponds with us, can you only imagine who we truly can be or what we truly can do? So with that being said, by the end of that movie, did you see how powerful she was? That's that's what I'm basically getting at. So watch that movie and get a better perception of it. Now we as humans also have 20 amino acids that are activated out of 64 that we contain which is also also excuse me another very minute percentage of our perception of the anatomy so as you can see that is clearly a very small amount of activation that we withhold that is only 20 of these 64 that we contain so that is a very small percentage, which I like to go by it as lack of awareness or lack of understanding. So by us only having a small amount of knowledge or um, abilities unlocked within us, that is lack of understanding. That is lack of us. Like we are lacking us within us. Like we haven't. We have yet to capture who we truly are because we are accessing a small, minute percentage of us. And it's all trickery in a sense. By, but by us lacking these percentages of our physique, we are then unable to compute or interpret that God consciousness that we truly withhold, which is what I was saying. By us lacking so much of us is hindering us from tapping into the powers that we withhold or the consciousness that we can expand to but follow with me people so some of you may be wondering or questioning the process of unlocking a god consciousness aka unlocking parts of our dna or tapping into all of the amino acids and this is where the sun comes in comes into play so approximately it takes about eight minutes for sunlight to reach earth eight minutes and about 15 seconds i want to say for um earth or sunlight to reach earth which as you may know the exposure of getting sunlight is very important that's simply because the sun is unlocking our dna and furthermore tapping helping us to tap into that god consciousness which is when we, this is then when we absorb the light codes through not only our eyes, but our tentacles, aka our hair, which are known as receptors. But not only that, through our feet and our palms, or our palms and our feet, yeah. So let's backtrack a little bit. Our hair is so important because they act as antennas or they act as receptors as I have it here simply because they can pick up or sense um, frequencies around our biofield. So for example, if you were to close your eyes or if you were not even to close your eyes, if you were standing a certain direction, you can almost feel when someone is near you, right or wrong. So if you wanted to test this out, close your eyes and Tell someone to put their hand in front of you and not and not to tell you when they're taking it away. So just kind of like test yourself. Can you feel when that hand is in front of you? Can you feel when they move it? And that's how powerful our receptors are. And not only is our receptors on our hair or on our body, excuse me, such as our legs, arms, back, um, even for men, your chest and your face, it even your hair guys everything is 
receptors and they are there for a purpose. If you have not heard that already, then I am here to tell you that they are very important and they act as absorbers and they can absorb light codes and furthermore activate us. So with that being said, those are very important and not to mention our eyes. Our eyes are very, very, very important. They are the highest receptors or the most potent receptors that we contain as human beings. Our eyes are very, um, very highly re receptive. So like I mentioned before, our hair can, you know, receive or absorb light codes and radiation from the sun and pick that up. So imagine what staring at the sun can do. So everything is like beneficial in a sense. So we are like, like sponges down here, which is what I will get into in a second. But yeah, if you're following me here, we are literally activating ourselves or able to activate ourselves simply by being in the sun, being exposed to the sun in any matter or form is beneficial, especially staring at the sun. That's why sun gazing is very beneficial. But anyways, the carbon in our bodies, which is then activated by the sun, so let's say that you are being exposed to the sun. The carbon in our bodies are being activated by the sun and absorbs light through our receptors and then activates us, aka unlocks our DNA. So yes, there is benefits by being exposed to the sun. And this is why in the first stage of the five sun cycles, in the awakening stage, the rising of the sun symbolized coming into consciousness. And I will go into this a little bit later in this um, presentation, but that is because we pretty much understood the importance of the sun and how it awakened a superior consciousness. So by being in the sun, you are tapping into a God consciousness. You are you know, pretty much accessing that God mode. Long story short. But moving forward, um, we are now in nature. So since we are already discussing the sun, I may as well elaborate on our connection with nature and how we share the same genetics with it or how it pretty much corresponds with us. So we as predecessors of this planet, aka extraterrestrial deities of this existence, which are now being altered genetically from the inside outwards, we are then, or now, turning back into our natural state of being. Which is why we are, of course, as you may know, we are in the seven year tribulation via the age of Aquarius. So we are turning genetically from the inside outwards back into our natural state. And some of you may question, well, who were we before? And this brings me to my next point, the importance of nature or our duality with nature begins with the anatomy. So we are microcosms of the macrocosms and by us simply being a smaller perception of the macros, we are um, this then explains how we are all one. So by us being micros of the macros, um, minute versions of the divine, or uh, a smaller perception of giants. So we are like miniature versions of true, um, you know, giants up above or the heavens. You know, whatever you want to, however you want to perceive that. I don't know, it's all the same, but we are pretty much micros, babies of the macros, the giants. So, um, being that nothing below the sun new is new, it specifies that everything is just a repeated cycle, meaning that there is no past, no present, or future. It just literally keeps going, and nothing has a beginning, middle, or end. It's just nowness, or as we know, oneness. And this is why in ancient times, way before slavery, guys, we didn't believe in calendars. We didn't have clocks. We didn't have a Gregorian calendar, per se. We didn't have, a, what do we call them now? Oh, sorry. Holidays. We didn't have birthdays. Like, none of that existed. 
even the language like it goes down all the way to that we none of that existed we didn't believe in time it was literally nowness it was oneness and this is also why we didn't age because we didn't believe in aging we didn't believe in time rather and by that being said if we didn't believe in time we had the existence of infinity or internally or eternally or what's the word i'm looking for um eternal like we had a everlasting life so by us not believing in time we there was no you know beginning middle or end it was literally nowness which is what we know as oneness but pretty much what i will be going into in a second is the anatomy or our correspondence with nature now our monocular anatomy is in exact correspondence with both trees and plants so with that being said the original humans but way before slavery way before were known to be plant like humanoids with of course green skin now the only difference now is that i or we as Melanated beings contain melanin within our bloodstream, within our DNA, and plants contain chlorophyll within them, which then causes them to refract the color green and for us to give off this blackness or aka brownness, which is the only difference that we pretty much have, excluding the fact that we have limbs and they don't. But moving forward, both trees and plants interpret the same conscious mind as us it just doesn't like i just mentioned share the same physical aspects as we do via body parts limbs a brain all that etc etc but in fact guys hear this earth vibrates at the same magnetic pulse of both our hearts and our brains and just how we have lungs the earth does too which is where plants and trees you know come into play so by that being said we are earth plants and trees just how we have lungs just how we have a pulse earth does too earth has trees and plants that's the lungs of the earth the pulse the magnetic pulse earth is thumping at a there it's so loud that it's quiet so if you guys can you know get that perception of it then you are good because we are literally all one literally we are all the same we just may not share the same physical aspects meaning we don't look the same but we are the same now where we are now is the flow of the kundalini energy now this is something that i pretty much wanted to tap into way earlier but it's okay because we're here now now i chose this i hope you guys can see my cursor if you can please follow along with it so i can further more elaborate on it but um or easier elaborate on it now i chose this picture here on purpose as you can see this is the snakes with the angel wings at the top and then here is the resemblance or symbolic to a spinal cord coincidence at all no these are angel wings but anyways this is actually like i said universal law where they have to put the truth and the lie directly in front of you and this is actually on an ambulance I believe, right? This is usually on a ambulance. But anyways, they have to put this in front of you and it's on you to detect, you know, that truth. So this is symbolic to the Kundalini energy flow. And as you can see here, this is a human being and this is the spinal cord and then of course the Kundalini flowing up to the pineal gland. Now I am going to describe how the pineal gland, excuse me, the, kundal, the kundalini energy properly flows up to the um, brain here and how it is an exact replica of the eye of Horus or the all-seeing eye. But let me backtrack a little bit. Now, 
the kundalini energy the, excuse me the kundalini energy begins at the very first vertebrae of our spine it's at the base of our spine in that pooch area where your um solar plexus rests or the very bottom or lower back area so the process of it is that the inner, if it is properly done let, let me just side note real quick if it is properly done you know if you of course are stretching you have the correct posture you are um meditating you know you're taking care of yourself you're, you're taking all the right steps in order for this to you know process then of course this is then where this takes place but if not you know you got some work to do but that's just side track Anyways, the first step of this all is where the energy sits. So, the energy is in the very first, like I just mentioned, vertebrae of your spine. And the energy then shoots up the spinal cord into the brain and then into your pineal gland, which pushes open the gland, being that your gland never really stays still. It, it's always at constant motion it then um, swells and then once it swells the perturgatory gland which I will go into all of this in just one second it pretty much slithers it slithers like a cobra's tongue or a tongue so after your energy has shot up through your spinal cord it then enters through your um perturgatory gland so as you can see here this is an exact replica of the human brain and the human brain is an exact replica of the all-seeing eye and let me just say this guys this is absolutely genius to me like this is absolutely divine like for the simple fact that the Egyptians had this all or created this all seeing eye and it in correspondence with the human brain is literally genius to me. I don't know, I find it very amusing and it is just it's it's like it's so is I don't know the word I'm looking for. It's very unique in a sense. And I, I just love the fact that it when I first found this out, it was just like wow, it was mind blowing because I was like, it actually it, it resembles it. And I was like, um, duh, it's it's you know, symbolizing it. So by it symbolizing it, I don't know, it just it made so much sense and that brings me back to my point where literally everything is one. Everything is one understanding. Everything is one consciousness. One, um, you know, one wholeness. At I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's mind blowing to me. But anyways, yeah. As you can see here, we have the medulla oblongata, which is this, which is also in the brain. And as I was mentioning before, if you can, please follow my cursor. But this is the medulla oblongata, and then. Here we have the corpus callosum, which is the eyebrow, and then we have the perturgatory gland, or yeah, which is right here, which resembles the nose area, and then we have the uh, thalamus gland, which pretty much resembles the retina of the eye, and then we have um, the cerebellum. Like, all of these resemble, you know, aspects of the all same eye, which is absolutely genius, like I just mentioned. But all in all, these are all symbolic to our senses. Taste, touch, smell, sound, and sight. They are all um, in correspondence with it, and it is absolutely amazing how it, you know, lines up. Like I was mentioning, but the pineal gland actually has the same physical substances as our two eyes it has a tissue it has a retina a cornea and it has um the ability to actually see so when people say when people mention third eye you may just 
think of spirituality or something on a more spiritual level, but it's actually something on a more physical level because it actually does share the same aspects as, you know, our true physical eyes. So this is why um, when, for example, you ask someone something and they say, um, or they roll their eyes, it's because they are channeling in that answer, of course, from that pineal gland. So, like I mentioned before, how Earth is at a, everything is at a, like, oneness, and how everything is in correspondence at the same magnetic, magnetic pulse. You know, those people say, um, because it's all one, and it just all ties in together, and it all corresponds. But with that being said, all of this is um, an exact replica of each other. Now, back, let me backtrack a little bit. Once the um, Kundalini energy flows up the spine and makes its way into the purgatory gland or the pituitary gland, however you want to explain it, and then makes its way through the... Um, through the eye, the all-seeing eye, or the, uh, what are we going to call it, the pituitary gland, once it makes its way through that, and it swells, and then it makes the pituitary gland slithers like a cobra, this is then where it is being activated, and it is pretty much, um, coating your brain, or, what can I, what's, what can I say? After, let me just start here. After the neuromelanin is spilled from the third vertical of the brain to the fourth vertical of the brain, the liquid melanin, which is then being shot from your spinal cord up into your brain, that liquid melanin then coats your brain. So it then stimulates it. And once it is being stimulated, you are then um, being activated and you are now turning into a god mode type character or you are now a god consciousness so you see how this process pretty much acts as if it is a stimulation like this like i mentioned it's a computer and we are computing this and learning it in a sense and then we are adjusting with it and i keep regurgitating but it is all connecting with each other this is why once again when you're born you don't really know how to speak you don't know how to walk you don't know how to talk you know, you don't know how to maneuver or control anything because you are still learning. And like I said, we are just computers. These, these are vessels. These vessels are robots. And we are inhabiting this body. So after um, everything then stimulates your mind and coats your mind, this, it, 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 it all just, you know, kind of stimulates you to become a godlike being and I'm gonna backtrack a little bit I know I keep going back and forth but you remember when I mentioned that the um, perturgatory gland once it is being stimulated or once the um, pineal gland pushes open the perturgatory gland slithers like a cobra this is where the Egyptians wore the cobras on their heads because it symbolized the completion or the, um, you know, the tapping into kundalini energy. So when you did see cobras, as you see here, are on the heads of the Egyptians, you know that they have accessed or tapped into, they have fully tapped into that god mode or that kundalini energy. So... Side note, if you see the kundalini, or excuse me, the cobra lying down or pretty much coming down on the heads of the um, serpents or the ancient statues, that symbolized a woman. And then if, of course, I have all men here, and if you see them with the cobra standing up, then that furthermore symbolized a um, male. So, some of you may be wondering, why did they have cobras? Not only because the uh, 
contributory gland slithered like a tongue. But if you um, actually look into a cobra, a cobra is symbolic to internal strength. Why? Because it can stand up without actual limbs, without actual arms and legs. So a cobra is symbolized to being enlightened or being, you know, strong. If you look at a cobra, it has the ability to stand. I think it's this cobra and um, one other snake that can actually stand up without physical limbs. So it was symbolic to internal strength. And internal strength in our perception was enlightened. So being enlightened was the, this is how we wore it. This is how we uh, basically showed people or others that we were uh, fully tapped into that kundalini energy so yeah pretty much the serpent energy traveling upwards all of this is in correspondence with each other and that's why I have these pictures up here moving forward which brings me to my very last point this is where we have our five states of consciousness are our five you know cycles of excuse me our five sun cycles now the first one as you can see is a beetle now our um ancestors or the egyptians they use something known as ideogram and ideogram is something that was used to symbolize something by using pictures so they use pictures to pretty much define something or symbolize something without using words so it is known as ideogram but as you can see here this beetle was the first ideogram of the stage so let's just take this for an example we have number one kepper which is the beetle this is known as the awakening stage and that that time of day was known as the morning or dawn and the state of consciousness was the birth of consciousness or the reborn and like i said this was the sun rising which symbolized coming into consciousness this is the baby state of consciousness basically like the awakening state or the first stage of the awakening the baby awakening so this is pretty much when you first are like conscious or when you first awaken in your spiritual journey and then we have here what you know as rock which is the stubborn stage or the teenage so we have the baby and then we have the teenager stage and the time of day of Ra is noon in the state of consciousness the state of being of understanding is in a teenage state of being so the perception or the outlook of the world is pretty much understandable like you have gotten some wisdom you've gotten some understanding of it all but you are still in a you know kind of um know-it-all state or immature state you're not a baby but you you're in a teenager so you're you're pretty much you know how teenagers are this is why they call it the know-it-all or the um you know what is it i forget the word but yeah this is pretty much still like a new or fresh state of being and then we have the adult stage so we have baby teenager adult and this is known as um aka the wise so um's time of day is afternoon or twilight and the state of consciousness is an elder and this is the state of being where you are pretty much a young adult or you are between the ages of 18 to 21, you know. So if you can imagine or kind of relate it to this physical third dimensional realm, then you can kind of better understand it that it's how do you perceive 18 to 21? Like, they kind of got an outlook on life. They don't really have it all there. They're wise. You know, they've been through enough to pretty much understand the format of life and get a good perspective on it. But they have yet to 
um, you know, grasp onto that full level of knowledge. But they are still there. So there is the baby, you know, the awakening teenager understanding, you know, kind of getting their perception. And there's wise where you understand and then you begin to grow wisdom. And then we have here the ten, which is the wiser. So this is the elder stage. This is the day of time is the evening or twilight. And that is where, you know, you have your highest level of knowledge. You have your highest level of ascension. You are at your highest level of ascension. And this is pretty much your highest level of consciousness. And by that, you pretty much are an elder. You know everything. You've been through it all. You've experienced. You've learned. And you've taught. So this is, I don't want to say the end, but this is like verging off to the elder stage. And everything is in correspondence with this physical realm. It is all one loop, that, which is why I understand it, because it all makes sense. And as you can see... A 10 is the highest level of consciousness. This is the Leo and Zodiac. And this is where many are, like myself, is trying to tap into the highest level of consciousness. And then this is sidetracked, but if you guys are aware of Akhenaten, he was falsely convicted of teaching sun worship, which we never worship the sun we just understood the science of it or the science behind it aka the benefits that it had upon us but we never actually worship the sun so with that being said um Akhenaten was falsely convicted of you know teaching sun worship in which he didn't he just lionized the sun or valued it in a sense we never worshiped it but then this is where um Amen or Aman, Aman Ra comes into play and he then threw um, him out of the way. So this is all kind of like, once again, in correspondence. This is why by the end of your prayer, you say amen, because that is the conclusion. That's the end, which ties me to my next point. This is where we have amen, the end, the conclusion of the journey. And this is known as the hidden in the time of day is night. And the state of consciousness is death, the fallen, the death of the ancestors to be hidden. So, like I mentioned before, this is where we, where most people, when they pray, they say Aman or Amen. Because that is like the end, the conclusion or the base. So, yeah. Aman or Aman Ra is there is a god named Aman Ra and he is the jealous god or he is the um, deceitful god. He was jealous of Ra or Heru and he actually mimicked or mocked the name of Ra and named himself Aman Ra. But that I did a video on that. A while back and you guys can definitely go tap into that but that pretty much um, concludes this video after tapping into all levels of consciousness and the proper kundalini um, flow you are then tapping into what we know as God mode so unlocking your DNA is very much so capable and you have the ability to do so so without further ado, thank you so much guys for watching this video. I truly appreciate your presence. I truly appreciate your attention. And once again, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so, so much. Peace, love, and light.